there and welcome to the Astranti Strategic Analysis for the 2018 August Operational Case Study where we're looking at the pre-scene case company Thomas Fine Teas, the Tea Blender. I'm James Nutting and I will be taking you through this video. So let's start with a brief introduction to the case. Hopefully by now you've had a look at the pre-scene at least and you're a little bit familiar. Maybe you've watched my pre-scene video series already. Maybe you haven't, uh, that's fine, but it would be good if you have some familiarity with the company uh, by this stage. So just as a recap then, Thomas Fine Teas are a premium quality tea blender based in d -Land. Now by premium quality, we're not putting them up in the luxury market per se. This just means that they charge at a higher price than the sort of major competitors. They're slightly more expensive, slightly more premium brand, and that's partly due to the higher quality, or so they say, of the tea that they sell. And they are a tea blender based in D-Land, a fictional country in the in Western Europe, probably based on a Western European nation like Britain or the Netherlands or, or Scandinavia, somewhere like that, doesn't really matter too much. And they sell a range of black, green, black and green tea bags, as well as tea infusions. So most of their sales are for black tea bags, Black tea, the normal tea that you drink, uh, being black, the one that you would normally add milk to. Green tea is kind of the healthy green tea. It's a different kind of tea. It's non-oxidized leaves. So there's certain health benefits in green tea that aren't in black tea. And then you have tea infusions, which technically aren't tea at all uh, because the things that are in the tea infusions tend to be various herbs or, or various other things that technically aren't from a tea plant, but it comes in a bag and people tend to call it tea infusions. So Thomas Fine Teas, we find from the pre-scene, have around about 11% market share in the tea uh, market in D-Land, and that makes them one of the main tea bag producers in the country. Now, if we're looking for real life comparisons, they're probably in around about the same sort of place as a company like Twinings, certainly not one of the, uh, the larger competitors in the market, but significant, well-known, and has a kind of special premium place, uh, known perhaps more for their quality um, uh, than, than other brands are. In terms of the organizational structure, we know that they are a private family business, and they've been around for over 200 years. So they established back in the early days of tea companies, and they've been going ever since, and they were involved uh, about 15 to 20 years ago in bringing green tea to a Western uh, Western market and they did quite well there but they've lost some market share in that particular area but in particular they are a private family business the director the managing director is married to the head of product and they have a daughter who is the head of finance so definitely a family company so what are we doing in this video? What is a strategic analysis? Well, it's something, it's a model that you may or may not be familiar with and it's called the rational model. And essentially it's a way of coming up with a business strategy. So when we call it the strategic analysis, the output of this video, the end point is that I'm gonna be presenting to you what I think is a good business strategy for Thomas Fine Tees going forwards and hopefully once you are aware and are familiar with that business strategy, it'll give you an understanding of what kind of things a company should do. So when you're in your exam in August and you're given various scenarios, you can refer back to this business strategy and think, okay, well, given that we think, well, well we think they should be doing this kind of thing, that here's how they res should respond to this particular issue. So that's the kind of idea. And the way we get there is, is by breaking it down essentially essentially into three, uh, but kind of into two. So the first thing we're gonna look at is where we want the business to be in the future, and then we'll look at where the business is now, and thus the business strategy is the steps we need to take to get them from where they are now to where they want to be in the future. So the first stage of this then is going to be focusing on the future aspect. We're looking to fully understand where the organization is heading 
along with its approach to meeting stakeholder needs. And to do this, we're looking at a variety of different areas. We'll be looking at um, primarily, or initially at least, the mission of the company and the objectives, or trying to get some sense of what their mission or an objectives might be, because they don't really give that kind of information away in the pre-scene. And then we'll be looking at these various other parts. So looking at what are the company's critical success factors? What must they do in order to succeed? We'll be doing stakeholder mapping. We'll use Mendeleev's matrix for that. So we'll take all the stakeholders of the company and we'll put them in Mendeleev's matrix. And that will tell us exactly how we should deal with each of those individual stakeholders. And we'll also be considering things like governance, ethics, corporate social responsibility, with a view to seeing where the company view themselves and where they want to be in respect of those various different areas. Okay, so let's crack on with missions. So the idea of a mission is to fully understand what an organization is all about, why it exists, for whom it exists, what's it trying to achieve. And all of that essentially boils down to common purpose. Everyone in the company is clear on the common purpose or the purpose of the company so everyone can get behind it and they can direct their efforts towards achieving that common goal. It helps to uh, focus a strategy and it provides direction to directors. So missions are really, really important and they really help. Now, in this case, uh, and in most cases, in, in the operational case study, you don't get given a specific set of objectives or a mission. But given uh, well, we could use Campbell's sort of um, sort of key elements for uh, good mission statements, and we'll look at purpose, strategy, values, and policies, and we can see if we can come up with something ourselves that would would sort of turn into what what might be a reasonable mission and set of objectives for Thomas Fine T. So we'll start off then by looking at purpose. So the purpose uh, element is understanding why an organization exists, for whom does it exist, and what does that organization hope to achieve in the long term. So before I put my answers up on the screen, see if you can, you know, pause the video and have a think for yourself of what you think the purpose of the organization is and try and answer some of these questions on your own and then unpause the video and obviously check and see, compare what you have against what I have. Okay, so hopefully you had a think about that. So what I got, why does the organization exist? Well, the most basic reason is to sell quality tea bags. For whom does it exist? Well, they're trying to sell those tea bags to tea drinkers. And if we want to get more specific, what does the organization hope to achieve in the long term? To me, it seems like they are aiming to become one of the top or if not the top premium provider of tea bags in DLAN. I don't think it's realistic to for them to aim to be one of the leading providers of tea bags in DLAN because they have this sort of special status as a premium provider. And I think that's important to include in their purpose and in their mission is that they are a premium provider of tea bags and thus they should try and stay within that market. I don't know whether it would be a good idea for them to expand out into more budget tea bags or more, uh, more uh, less expensive tea bags, less quali uh, lower quality tea bags. I think it's important to have that premium element. Uh, but they could certainly become the top or remain the top premium provider of tea bags in DLAN for now. And pot potentially they might want to exp expand uh, into the rest of Europe or to other big tea drinking nations. So I think that would be a good sort of summary of their purpose. So now we can move on to strategy and strategy is all about how exactly they're going to achieve or how they're going to put that purpose into action. So how will the organization compete and what are the range of businesses in which it operates? So again, pause the video, have a think about it, see what you can come up with. Okay, so the strategy then can be a little bit more precise because it's not just a general purpose. We need to start thinking about how we're going to you know, go about achieving what we want to achieve. So for me, I think Thomas Fine Tees, their strategy should be or could be something along these lines. And that is to source the best quality leaves from around the world with the aid of expert tea tasters. I think those tea tasters and their expertise are going to be essential for the success of this company. 
They're generally focused on general tea drinkers and obviously corporate clients, but within that, the, there are general tea drinkers. You know, we're talking about they have a, a corporate contract with uh, the, the national government of D-Land and also the uh, one of the airlines. So the end consumer are, are general tea drinkers. So that's maybe an idea of the strategy. What about values, what the organization stands for, whether that be quality or value or innovation, etc. So pause the video, have a think, and then come back. Okay, so I think a obviously identifiable value for the company is quality, and they want to be purchasing quality tea leaves so that they can make quality tea and justify their sort of premium uh, brand as slightly more expensive, potentially more profitable. I also think that they need to reinstate the value of a variety of products. Now, they obviously have a, a reasonable range of different black teas, but they only have two different kinds of green tea and um, only three different kinds of tea infusions. And they could expand this uh, these varieties more. And I think that, you know, a variety of products is is something that they should should ex expand to all the different uh, blends, uh, not just uh, black tea, which which has the most. And finally, let's think about policies. And, you know, policies are the things that people are expected to follow. Then sure that they act according to the defined value strategy and purpose. So what actual policies can the company put into place to make sure that we're hitting everything with purpose, strategy and values? So one of the few policies that were sort of identifiable in the pre-scene was that the that Thomas Fine Teas, they strive to be an ethical purchaser and to pay a fair price. Obviously, they're dealing with, you know, developing nations. They're buying tea leaves from China and India and Sri Lanka. And so they have to be careful about, you know, making ethical decisions, making sure that the quality, the treatment of workers on these various plantations is 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 fair and that the price paid for the goods is is fair and that, that no um, massive exploitation is going on based, based on the fact that, you know, we have developing nations against developed nations. Okay, so how did you do there? Hopefully you got some sort of similar answers. Maybe some of you got something slightly different. There's not necessarily anything, any majorly wrong answers there as long as you got sort of within the ballpark of, of the things that we've talked about here. So the next thing to think about once we've sort of uh, identified a mission is to think about objectives and performance measurement. Okay, and so the whole point of objectives is to provide a focused target to move towards um, for direct planning, to motivate staff, and to enable accurate performance measurement. So it's no good just having a mission. It, you need to have objectives and targets to kind of put that into uh, action and make sure that we can we can achieve our our targets uh, achieve, achieve our strategy and our mission by having useful objectives and from the case study we can infer perhaps a few specific targets based on the budgeted information um, we saw that there were budgeted an increase in revenue by 3.5%. So you might say that that was a target. They might have a target to expand the green tea range and to try and, you know, to, 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 to get some sort of product development going in that area and uh, to, to sort of increase their market share once again. Uh, the company is likely to have more specific strategic targets, but we're not just not going to be told about those. For one reason, this is an operational case study exam, and so that kind of information is generally, you know, a much higher level. Um, but but generally, they don't tend to include that kind of stuff anyway, because um, you, them, you're more sort of focused on, like I say, more operational things or just more general uh, business stuff and strate strategic targets aren't necessarily a, a, an important thing for SEMA to put in the pre-scene that they're going to examine you on, but it does help us come up with a strategy. So one thing we might say is that if in the unseen, it suggests that there are no actual specific strategic targets. So if we're assuming there are, but if the, the exam itself says they don't have any strategic targets, then you should say that that's a weakness in the company's planning approach 
and they should do something to overcome that. So maybe a balanced scorecard would work well too there. Uh, there is little evidence of robust non-financial performance measurement in the case. And so suggesting balanced scorecard uh, to overcome this weakness or even just having specific targets and maybe even suggesting some targets uh, would, would be uh, be an option in, in the exam with regards to you know improving in this particular area. So just before we finish, I'd like to take you through some of the products we offer in our, in the entire case study course. So this is just one element of the whole course, and I'll just go a few, uh, through the other things that we offer here. So to start with, we have a study text that is devoted to the operational case study, and that's split into two parts. The first part is a guide to how to pass the case study exam. It's full of exam tips, exam strategy, time management, preparation and planning, how to write to the marking criteria, all those kinds of things. And then part two of that study text is a condensed version of all the relevant material of the kind of things that come up in the exam over and over. So essentially it's uh, the most popular topics that have come up in past exams from E1, P1 and F1. And so those are the two study texts available for the operational case study course. And we also do course videos that are roughly based around that first study text. So the exam advice and the timing, the planning, all the things that go in to preparing an exam strategy, we have an entire series of videos that go through that in detail. So if you're more of a visual learner rather than a reader, you can check those out and they'll be a great help in, in getting you past the exams. Uh, the pre-scene analysis is the series of six videos where we look through the actual pre-scene in, in minute detail, going through every paragraph, making notes and looking how we can use this information to better prepare for the exam uh, when the, the exam comes up. Separate from that is an industry analysis and that is a document and um, a video as well so the two are in tandem and the document is about a hundred pages looking at the industry in which the company exists so for example if the case company is in the car and they're a car manufacturer then the industry analysis would be an analysis of the car industry and that's a that's like i say that's a, a large document where we break it down and we're essentially the point of that is we're doing the research for you to save you time and energy and the really great thing about the industry analysis is that we include 25 industry examples at the end. So things that happened in the real industry. So the example I just used, it being the car industry, if we were doing the car industry, we'd take 25 examples from the car industry of relevant news and things that have happened to companies and to the industry and consumers or whatever it is. As, as when we get from those 25 examples, we write a little exam paragraph the kind of thing that you can literally rehearse and put it in your exam uh, if it's relevant examiners do like to see that you have a wider industry knowledge and so putting in a little example uh, like that can get you good marks we do uh, mock exams for so for the operational case study we write three mock exams and we have a free mini mock that you can do that are based on the actual SEMA style case study so they're computer based they're online and they're timed and it's as close to the real thing as we can possibly make it and uh, that's that's a really good way to prepare you for the exam each time we write our questions based on the pre scene that's just been released and with those mock exams you can put or you can get marking and feedback and that's really uh, essential for you to if you do your mock exams i would recommend also getting marking and feedback because you can uh, you can then see where you went wrong or what you did well and the feedback allows you to improve on that really important part that a lot of students skip over and they really struggle in the exam because they weren't prepared they hadn't done the mock exams we have master classes that run uh, a, a, over a course of two separate weekends um, running up to the exam and they they are live essentially a live online class uh, webinar where our tutor will go through um, with you the the kind of a revision one where we're start like cap recapping on the most important topics uh, from the e1 p1 and f1 syllabus and one will be sort of more exam focused and then finally, we offer pass guarantee, which means that if you meet all the requirements, so you use all these, these um, 
all these different products that are available and you fill in a checklist to say that you've done those uh, but you still don't pass your exam you're unfortunate or whatever then we have a we will allow you to reset our course to take our course again at no extra charge that's really great for people who uh, are perhaps taking it for the first time and they don't quite pass but they, they need to take the course again if, if you've if you've gone through that scheme and you've done everything you, that we ask you to do then we'll give you the course again for free Okay, and that's that's that. Um, uh, just gives you an overview of the course that we have available.